Hello everyone, I'm Phoenix Tremaine and this is your daily recap for General Hospital for Wednesday, November the 11th. But first, if you haven't done so, please take a minute to subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you. I really appreciate it. Please hit that like button because every time you hit the like button, let YouTube know this is a good channel for viewers looking for information on soaps. And you can also become a member where you get early access to videos, uh, exclusive um, videos and more. So go on ahead and hit that uh, join button so you can see a video that tells you all the great perks you get for being uh, a member. And since this is a General Hospital video, uh, you get the spoilers a week in advance for General Hospital. Um, it normally comes out on Saturday for everyone else, but you get those spoilers on Sunday or Monday. So that's just one of the perks that you get for being a member. And um, so we got General Hospital for Wednesday, November 11th. Greg's father, I'm sorry, Finn's father Greg arrives and he surprises Chase and Finn and uh, Chase does a great job looking like a kid, happy that his family is actually interacting with each other. Um, Jason tells Sonny that Franco asked him to get rid of him and um, Sonny said just make sure that um, this is legitimate and because of the brain tumor. And so Jason said he has, and he's going to have Spinelli look into Franco files to see if his brain tumor is really bad. Uh, we had Franco tell Scott to look over his life insurance policy. Scott assumed that he was trying to end himself to uh, get money for Elizabeth and the kids. He's like, that's really stupid. Franco's like, no, if I did that, then I would not get then they won't pay out for that. So he's like, I just want to know if there's a violent situation that happens that, you know, my family's covered. He doesn't tell, tell uh, Scott why, but he does at the end of the episode tell uh, Liz that the tumor's back. Uh, Dante turns on Peter's computer and all his offshore account files are just sitting there open. Really? He didn't even have to look for the files. He turned the computer on and he didn't even have to find a passcode. It wasn't, his screen wasn't, my screen is password protected. <laughs> and I don't have offshore accounts. So, you know, he don't have a passcode or anything. And he's just able to go in there and find these confidential files and he's able to copy them even when Peter arrives he's able to tell some cover story about oh there was some cyber security issues and I was just checking your computer to make sure it wasn't tampered with <clears throat> and I'm like that makes no sense Peter's too smart for that why wouldn't Peter call cyber security just to verify that Dante was telling the truth but that wouldn't move the storyline forward. Uh, Finn tries to get along with his dad. Um, and then Tagger shows up at Sonny's Coffee House without a disguise. This is one of the things that really annoys me. And it's not just soap operas. It happens in primetime shows. It happens in movies where people that are supposed to be on the run, they don't do so much as wear a wig, put some hair dye, they're like wanted fugitives and whatnot in a lot of these movies and they don't do anything because they don't want to change the actor's appearance I guess you know they want you to know that this actor is is in the movie or whatever and I'm like that is stupid as stupidest thing and then um, Cyrus shows up at the coffee house and got Taggart looking stupid Cyrus doesn't see Taggart but he could have easily seen Taggart walking into the coffee coffee shop because he came in not long after Taggart, who didn't even have a hat on. Not even a hat. So, uh, Jordan and Curtis tell Laura the truth about everything that's been going on except for Taggart's alive. Um, so they told her all of the truth. I thought Laura was in on it. She's been gone so long. I just assumed she was in on it. But, you know, she threatens to fire Jordan and says, you know, just keep on investigating. Curtis shows her this redacted, or I think Jordan shows her this redacted file. 
and the redacted file, um, Laura looks at it, turns pale white, like she just seen a ghost or something. And she's like, oh no, I don't know what this file's about. But when she walks outside, she calls him up and is like, we're in trouble. I'm assuming she called Robert because I don't think, you know, well, she can't call Luke because he's in, he lives in Switzerland, I think. And, you know, there's embargoes and stuff. That's why they couldn't get Holly um, to be on the show because they can't, they're quarantined. They can't leave London. So, yeah, I don't know who she's calling. Felicia? <laughs> Somebody. Because they said it was from a long time ago, but it was, Laura was in Port Charles. And I think she's from Port Charles. So that was a strange way to say it. But something from the past is coming back to haunt Laura. Um, the only thing to me that would make her look like that would be, um, I'm about to say Stefano, but uh, Nicholas' father, I can't remember his name, right, Stavros. Anything involved in Stavros usually makes Laura have that look, but according to the letter, it's somebody that Cyrus loves, so, and Stavros is probably dead for like the second or third time, so I'm guessing it's not him or Helena, but we're going to move on. Um, Finn's father tells Anna and Finn that he's staying in town. He's going to be at the Metro Court. Uh, Lulu tells Maxie that she's afraid to get close to Dante because he could get PTSD again and feel like he has to leave. Um, Valentine and Anna decide to keep the secret from Peter and Finn because Robert, no, I'm sorry, Valentine tells Anna that, you know, let's not tell Finn either because Finn may feel obligated to tell um, Robert or, or Peter or whatever. I'm, I'm assuming that. Uh, Laura is shown, oh, we, uh, that's everything, because I went out of order. So that was everything. Um, let me know what you thought about this episode of General Hospital. I'm still frustrated, even though I know on Friday we'll get, well, tomorrow and Friday, I know that Nina gets news on her child, um, but the spoilers for next week mention that she um, feels um, defeated, so I guess she doesn't get the good news, but I think it's on Friday that Carly realizes that Nell is uh, Nina's daughter because next week uh, Nell, uh, Carly is trying to convince Jax that uh, trying to find Nina's daughter is going to be trouble. So that was the episode. Like I said, let me know what you thought. Are you ready for the nail news to come out? It's inching closer and closer. I need it now. And um, that, and also I need Finn to find out Chase is his son. Chase to find out Finn is his father. We need to get that moving along too. And I will see you in the next video.